Welcome to The Barn. My name is Jason Curtis, and I am your show announcer. Today's show is sponsored by CUDX.com. This is my website where all contact and other podcast information can be found. If you would like to be a guest or recommend someone, we are always looking for good content. A quick bio on today's guest is in order. In 2010, she became a USHA certified trainer. She takes her students to shows up and down the East Coast, with many of them qualifying for year-end finals and other top shows. She believes that riding should be a lifetime pursuit that teaches horsemanship and sportsmanship, along with a large measure of compassion for our equine partners. With those skills, she believes that her students are ready to achieve their life goals and are able to field any wild pitches that life throws at them. Many years of volunteering in different capacities in the USHAA and the other equine organizations, it was in 2016 she was elected president of the USHAA. Mary Babick, welcome to the barn, and it is a pleasure to hear your voice once again. Thank you so much, Jason. I think we're in the time of wild pitches right now, so I must be ready for that. So you and a few of your clients are at a show today. Where might that be? We are in Saratoga in New York where it's not actually considered a horse show as we would think about it. It's called an agricultural training session. When you're here, it is a horse show, but there are no spectators, only essential personnel, meaning the rider, trainer, and groom. If the rider's a minor, there's a parent here, but no other people are allowed on the grounds. So it's uh, it's got a different feel. I'm very grateful for you agreeing very quickly, as I just contacted you yesterday on Facebook, to be a guest and speak to us about COVID and horse showing. And if you don't mind, I'd like to get right to it. Generally speaking so far, how do you and your clients think the USEF COVID-19 requirements are going at the horse shows? My customers are already used to a really high level of biosecurity protocol at my barn. So coming here was not a big leap for them. The thing that I have to keep reminding them of is, you know, wear your mask. And we learned immediately last week when it was in the high 90s that the three-layer masks are extremely difficult to work in. So we've all transitioned to bandanas or gaiters. I have to remind them to stay six feet apart. And that's really tough for people because they consider themselves part of a family, even though they are not related. And so they, as many other people are are struggling with this idea of keeping six feet away. That's six feet away and wearing a mask at the same time, correct? So USEF says that if you go into the six-foot space, you must have a mask on even if you are part of the same family unit. I think here at Saratoga, they would like you to wear your mask all the time. And I'm actually sitting here watching people walk around all by themselves with their masks on, which is not a far leap because in New York, masks are pretty much required everywhere. So people are used to it and fairly compliant with it. I've had the opportunity to talk to many people at different shows who see others that are wearing their mask in compliance with the requirement. Then, as like everywhere else, the restaurants or grocery stores, big box stores, there are the few and often most obstinate people who simply won't wear a mask no matter what. What consequences in our show world that we're concerned about, if any, does USEF or USHA impose on members who repeatedly violate the requirement? Great question. So USHA has no regulatory power. That is all USEF. So whatever USEF does, we follow. Like We have actually signed an agreement saying if they suspend somebody, we will also suspend the person. But what USEF has made very clear to the managers is if someone is not compliant with social distancing, with wearing a mask, that they can and should throw them off of the showgrounds. And I've certainly, I'm not going to mention names, it's not fair, but I have helped over the last couple of weeks some shows that have struggled with people who will not wear masks or will not utilize social distancing. And so You know, I've said to the Federation, sometimes you're going to need to come in and swing a bigger axe at people, and that's what they've done. They've not been wanting to punish the horse shows, but to let people know that the price of horse showing right now at a USCF show is following that mask protocol and the social distancing protocol. Right, and that's kind of, you know, USEF, as I understand it, 
they've made it the show management responsibility of enforcing the requirements to wear a mask and not the stewards or TDs for our dressage friends when the shows are doing everything they can, including hiring extra staff to try and make people comply. And yet some are not, and they continue doing the same thing over and over again. Is it the steward and TD's job or is it the show manager's job? Whose responsibility is that in the end? Well, it's really all of our responsibilities because To come here, you have to sign the waiver and you have to acknowledge that you're going to follow the COVID plan. So, you know, whether you're the show manager who might have to throw somebody out, the steward that might have to give someone a yellow card or throw somebody out, or a trainer that's going to have to admonish their clients, we're all in this together. And, you know, here at Saratoga, they have an even higher level of protocol than USCF does. And some of their protocols are very difficult to deal with. And I told the managers here the first day, you know, look, your protocols are tough, but we drove in the driveway and we signed your entry blanks. So we have to comply. It's the price of entry. Right. Right. And I think a lot of people are missing that point. Yes, I would agree with that. If the only consequence to the individual for being in noncompliance is being made to leave the showgrounds, Doesn't that put show management in the position of having to lose income by excluding some competitors and also puts the stewards in an awkward position when the show hires them to do that job? Yeah, I've been speaking to the managers zone by zone, and it is a little bit of a hardship for a manager to say to a a group of people, I'm sorry, you have to leave because that's income out of their pocket. But again, you know, they signed on the manager and the customer to follow this protocol. So the manager has to do it, but the federation has to back that manager up. And so far, even though it's awkward and people get very angry about it, it has been working. In speaking with some of the managers yesterday, what they said is they like to work through the trainers to try to get the trainers to understand what's necessary and to have the trainer communicate to their customers what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to act. Because I think we're really lucky to be back at work doing something that we actually love to do. We're very fortunate people. But people who are going rogue could stop it for all of us. And that means so many people are not going to have a paycheck, whether it's the judge, the announcer, the ring crew, and so on and so on. I mean. Right now, it's our social responsibility, even if we don't believe that we should comply. I made this statement not so long ago to a dressage show where it was, they have the constitutional right not to wear the mask, but you as a show manager also have the constitutional right to kick them off the property. And that was kind of where I left it with her because she was like, how do I do this? You know, she was just calling me for advice. I said, look, they're right. They have the right to say, hey, I'm not going to wear the mask okay, then I have the right to please leave the property. One person did leave with a couple of clients and a few of their horses, and that's just how it happened. Then what was really nice about that is, of course, the rumor mills being horse shows went everywhere, and everyone you saw had their mask on. Yes. Well, you know, they say public executions are good for morale. And sadly, sadly, that does happen. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a horse show did struggle terribly. You know, people would not wear their masks. They were gathering in large groups. And at the following, the second week on a Tuesday, the management had to sit people down and explain that if they could not behave, they would be expelled. And if they would not leave, then the Federation would, in fact, take away the license for the show. And it really, it it startled people. I, I had a couple of people call me who said, I'm not sure if I was just threatened or admonished, but I just realized that I, I have no, there's nothing I can do except comply or not come. And the person said, I really, I want to come to shows. So therefore I will comply. And that leads me really right into my next question, which you kind of already answered, but I need to ask it anyway. Without naming names, do you know of any show or person that has actually been called to any actionable consequences of being reported to USF? So many horse shows have been reported to USCF, 
And at this moment, each and every one has received a very strong warning. And a warning was all it took. That's good news. I, yeah, it is It is good news. And as I said to Bill Maroney when, when I made one of my most recent calls about a show that, that was struggling with people who were just not acting properly, I said, please do not punish the horse show managers. Help them by, you know, showing your power as the Federation and letting the members know that they have to comply. And that way the manager can continue to run and the people who are compliant can be happy and continue to show. Right. Now that we're a few weeks into our road to recovery, if you will, and a new normal maybe, have you heard anything from Yousef as to any proposed changes now that the first shows are completed? We have evidence of what is and is not working by the shows being reported uh, for noncompliance. Do you see any changes coming down or have you heard anything from Yousef? Oh, absolutely. So they update their COVID-19 policy every Tuesday. So as managers report back what works, what doesn't work, problems that they've experienced, the Federation takes that, figures out how to make a change in their policy, and then publishes it. And those changes are always in red. It's right on the front page of their website. So for instance, one of the changes was it's very, very difficult when there's a mother and a child or a father and a child, and they're very close to one another because they are related. Now, they're not being told by the stewards that they have to separate anymore. If they're close to each other, they still have to wear a mask, even if they're related. But as soon as they identify themselves, this is my child, then the steward says, okay, thank you very much. Now, prior to that, um, if a mother and a child or a father and a child were sitting close together, they were told that they had to separate, which is, of course, not correct. It's not safe. So, right. And that would be extremely difficult and I would imagine extremely emotional as well. Yeah. So that that's one change that's happened. And the managers have been really, really helpful at identifying what works and what doesn't work. And um, in fact, I am getting ready probably next week to have a webinar with any manager who wants to attend so that the managers can share information on do they take temperatures on the way in? How do they do that? You know, how do they keep people apart? How do they, you know, make sure that masks are worn? What do they do about their office? And on and on and on. I'm being at a horse show right now. Very, very different. Right. I know the show that I announce regularly, everyone that comes down that gate, everyone that comes into the property, they always have an EMT with one of those thermal temperature readers. You lean forward, they hit you in the forehead with it, and they say, okay, you're fine. And you know they do that with everybody in the car. So I know that's happening at the show where I am normally. I'm assuming uh, that's happening other places as well. Some, yes. I mean, I think ESP in Florida has done you know a stellar job of that. They are using Global, and they have locked it down to one entrance where you walk through a thermal imaging camera, which takes your picture and records your temperature. And then they have a whole procedure. If you have a fever, what happens next? Here at Saratoga, there's only one entrance. And so they have entry hours and you come in, you're screened. Um, I'm wearing my COVID screening bracelet. You get a different one every day. Other places are going to have a lot more trouble with this because they have many, many entrances and exits. For instance, Tom Struzeri from Lamplight told us yesterday on the manager's call that the Federation asked for them to take temperatures on a random basis. And so what they chose to do was to take anyone's temperature who was going to enter a building, whether it was the restaurant, the, you know, office. And so they've been doing that. Now, smaller shows, I'm not sure how they're going to handle that. It's a lot of extra staff to take temperatures. Well, that and I know, as you speak about staff, I know all the officials and everyone that is part of the show team have to have their temperatures taken every day by the steward. Yes, that is true. Now, I've heard from a few show organizers that they have had no issues because they are, you know, the base area that they're drawing their competitors from are in an area where masks are everywhere. The county and the state require masks if you're going to be in a store. Those people aren't having the real hard time. But I've heard from other shows where... There are no requirements in their state or their county. 
and those of the USEF rules are more strict. These appear to be the shows that are having a harder time with compliance. Well, as I said earlier, one of my friends lives in an area that you know doesn't wear masks and feels really strongly that I think the entire state doesn't want to be told what to do. Walking around in Saratoga, you know, you see pretty much everyone who might be riding has a gaiter or a bandana so that they can pull it up every time they jump off a horse. And I think, you know, it's just, it's become part of our uniform here. And I think those other places will have to start adopting that policy of, all right, this is just what we do. Just one further question, and it's just kind of a follow-up of something you said earlier. You had said earlier that the stewards could give competitors a yellow card. I hadn't read that in the rule book anywhere. Does the stewards really have teeth in this matter? They do. They can definitely give a yellow card. They can give a yellow card for a lot of different things. And that's actually in the general rules. So let's say, we'll just make something up. Let's say they are watching the ring and they see a person who is congregating too closely with people and not wearing a mask and they give them a warning and then that didn't work. So then they can say, well, I'm going to give you a yellow card and then it doesn't work again. The next step for that steward is to actually call the federation and say, you know, look, I'm considering charging Susie Q with, you know, a violation of the rules because this person refuses to wear their mask or refuses to stay away from people you know, will you stand behind me? And the Federation has a whole evidence gathering process. And at that moment, they do actually back the steward. Once they, you know, they've gone through the whole thing and they say, yep, steward, you should do this. Then they've got that steward's back for sure. That's, I think, new information for some people. You know, that's a fairly new process, this whole evidence gathering thing and, you know, reaching out to the Federation to make sure the Federation wants to make a charge, because I think it can be very tough to be a steward. I I don't envy them their job at all. Being a rule enforcer sometimes is not the uh, most enviable spot on any staff. So it's It's really hard to tell people no. No, you're doing it wrong. You know, it's no one likes you at that moment, but you know, that they should be about upholding the rules. And this is at this moment a very important rule, both for our physical well being, but also for the well being of the industry. And that, in the end, is really what we're looking for is for everyone to understand look, we all want to be back to work. You want to be selling horses or buying horses or having your clients ride. And this is the way you have to do it to make that all happen for all of us. Yes, I think, you know, our board has said that we want horse shows to resume in the safest and most socially responsible way possible. And that is what the Federation is doing, is trying to make this safe and socially responsible. Is it fun? No. I mean, it's fun to be at the horse show, but it's not fun to, you know, wear your mask or to remember to stay far away from people not fun to have to spread out all over the place to watch things, but it's, I don't want to call it our new normal because I don't actually think this is normal. It's part of our, our new routine for the moment. Right. And hopefully this too shall pass. Oh, let's hope. So to kind of wrap this whole show up, I do have one more question I want to ask you. What can we expect in the Adventures of Scampi Volume 5, Chapter July? <laughs> Well, Miss Scampi is very busy sleeping because it's so hot here. It's, uh, yeah, it's really warm. So she's hiding out in the camper and she has not told me yet what she wants to say, but I guarantee you she'll have something. I have a couple of mask fish pictures of her. So perhaps to keep it thematic, we should have her in her mask for her next post. That would be very cute and very, very fitting. I follow you on Facebook, as you know, and I do look forward to your Scampi updates because that's just, I like to think Facebook was intended for cute cat videos, great horse videos, and the dog videos too. And I follow you on Facebook and I follow several people on Facebook for that type of story. So I want to say thank you. And I am a fan of your Scampi series. Well, thank you. I think Facebook for me is all about the adventures of Scampi and positivity because there's enough negativity in the world. We, We don't need to add to it. Right. And that's really... I think at your core, that's 
a person who you are. Every time I've met you, I've known that to be true. So, Mary, if you would give people contact information, if they have any questions to ask you, how can they get a hold of you? They can send me an email, and that would be mbabick, B-A-B-I-C-K, 13 at gmail.com. Also, people do send me Facebook messages and all kinds of different ways. I mean, smoke signals might work, too, if I can figure out what you're trying to say. Right. Mary Babak, president of the USHAA, thank you so very much for your time, ma'am. I am honored to have spoken to you today and kind of put some more information out there for people as we go through this COVID-19 process and our horse thank shows you, come back out. You have a great afternoon. Mary, thank you, ma'am, very, very much. I appreciate your time. Bye. Bye.